Welcome to Lecture Online, and our next problem is going to involve distance, speed, and time. Very classic type of problem. And so let's say we have a train that's traveling 160 miles out, turns around, comes back, and on the way back travels 10 miles an hour faster than when he went, and the total trip took 7 hours and 12 minutes. How fast was the train going in each direction? So here we can say, well, let x equal the speed going, and then x plus 10 is equal to the speed coming back. So one of the unknowns is how fast was the train traveling going out and coming back. The second one is we don't know how much time the train took going out and how much time the train took coming back, but we do know that the two added together adds up to 7 hours and 12 minutes. Now since 12 minutes, if we divide that by 60 minutes, that ratio is 1 to 5 which is equal to 0 0.2. So we can convert 7 hours and 12 minutes to 7.2 hours, and we probably want to do that. So this is equal to 7.2 hours. What we can also say is that the time going, call that T1, and the time coming back, which is T2, the time coming back, that they add together to 7.2 hours. So we can say that T1 plus T2 is equal to 7.2. And of course, we have the equation that relates distance, velocity, and time. We can say that distance is equal to velocity times time. Therefore, time is equal to distance divided by the velocity. And since we know the distance going, the distance coming back, 160 miles, we can write this equation as 160 divided by x, which is the speed going, plus 160 divided by x plus 10, which is the speed coming back, must add up to 7.2. And if we solve that equation, we can solve for x, which is the speed of the train going, and x plus 10 is the speed of the train coming back. So now, how do we solve that? Again, we've seen some examples like that before. We multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator, which is x times x plus 10. And here we multiply this times x times x plus 10. If we do that, on the left side, the x will cancel out, and we have 160 times x plus 10, plus the x plus 10 cancel out. That gives us 160 times x is equal to 7.2 times x times x, which is 7.2x squared, plus 7.2 times x times 10, which is 72x. So it looks like we want to get rid of the, uh, the uh, decimal place here, we want to get rid of the parentheses, so let's see, what will we do first? Well, let's get rid of the decimal place. So we're going to multiply both sides by 10. So 10 and 10, so that gives us uh, 1,600 times x plus 10 plus 1,600x is equal to 72x squared plus 720x. All right, so now we have no decimals left. Next, what we want to do is get rid of the parentheses. So this gives us 1,600x plus 16,000 plus 1,600x equals 72x squared plus 720x. All right, that looks like a quadratic equation, so let's move everything over to one side. So we have 1,600 plus 1,600 is 3,200. We'll move that across. So we have 0 equals 72x squared plus 720x minus the two combined, which gives us uh, 3,200x, and then minus, it looks like, 16,000. Okay. So let's see here. Um, I wonder. I wonder if 72 divides into 3,200 and 16,000. I'm going to try that real quick to see if we can simplify things a little bit. 3,200 divided by 72 equals, nope, doesn't, so we'll just keep it as is. Uh, next, what do we want to do next? Uh, let's uh, combine this a little bit. Uh, so we'll combine those two, come up here. So we have 0 equals 72x squared. Uh, subtract 720 from 3200, that would be um, uh, 2480, so that would be minus 2480x and then minus 16,000. Okay, we can probably simplify it a little bit because I know that this is at least divisible by two, divisible by four, divisible by eight. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, for at the very least, maybe by 16, we'll see. 
So let's try a few things to simplify this. So let's see if we can divide 72 by 16. That's 4.5. How about by 8? So 72 divided by 8. Uh, nope. Yeah, it does. Yep. There we go. 0 equals 9x squared minus uh, 2480 divided by 8, which gives us 310x minus 6, 1600 or 16,000 divided by 8. That would be 2,000. All right. Now we have a quadratic equation. It's a little simpler. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So x is equal to 310 plus or minus the square root of 310 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is minus 2,000, all divided by 2a, which is 18. So x is equal to 310 plus or minus, let's see here, 310 squared plus, because the minus cancels out, plus 36 times 2,000 equals, take the square root of that, gives me 410. So plus or minus 410 divided by 18. So x is equal to, if I add the two together, I get 720 divided by 18. Or if I subtract the two together, I get a negative number. And of course, x cannot be negative, so that's not a possible value. So it would be 720 divided by 18. 720 divided by 18 equals, and that's exactly 40. 40. What does that mean? Coming back up here. Let x equal the speed going. So 40 miles per hour was the speed of the train going out. And since the train was going 10 miles per hour faster coming back, so it would be 50 miles per hour for the train coming back, and those are the answers. And that's how we do that. The key, of course, to these types of problems is to set up some sort of equation. In this case, we knew that the sum of the two times going and coming is 7.2, and when we then replace that by the definition of time, which is distance divided by velocity, knowing the distance and expressing the velocity in terms of x, we can solve that equation for x. And that was our approach on this particular problem.